The same questions arise again and again among our colleagues at the Academy due to problems with the installation of springs and shock absorbers. Today, we would like to address these issues and provide the solution and maybe some useful tips and tricks for you. Rainer, from your experience, what does it mean for everyone involved when mistakes are made when installing shock absorbers and springs? For the workshop, the mechanic, but of course also for the customer. Mistakes are annoying. This means that if such errors occur during installation, it is quite possible that the entire workshop routine will be disrupted. In other words, a component breaks during fitting, I have to get something new, a new component, I can't keep this deadline with a customer at all. I will have to call them and say, OK, no, the car won't be ready today, or maybe two or three hours later. At the same time, we sometimes really have the problem that we don't even recognize this error directly. This means as a master technician, I take the vehicle for a test drive, check everything out and everything is fine. I hand over the vehicle and two weeks later the customer is back in front of the workshop and says, I have a problem. I hear something, something's not okay. That means that on this day the whole workshop is completely out of order. That means I can't send the customer away. I have to deal with this problem immediately. I have to give the customer preferential treatment. At the same time, I might have to provide a higher car. That means that the costs that arise are of course much, much higher. We take all this information which may not have reached the workshop to heart. This means that we at the Academy try to provide all kinds of information through education and training so that such mistakes do not happen. In addition, this is a safety-related component. This means that the well-being of all passengers is also at stake. We're now taking a look at the mistakes that can occur and the problems that can arise. We took a test drive and noticed sluggish vehicle handling. Exactly. During the visual inspection, we were able to determine that the shock absorber was defective and of course we checked everything from the strut bearings to the shock absorbers to the control arms. We have selected the products in the online catalog. Of course, it must be taken into account that you check vehicle-specific characteristics, such as vehicle, equipment or even the axle configuration. Based on this information, we have selected the appropriate shock absorbers for this vehicle for vehicles with multi-link axle and standard suspension. We also ordered buffer stops and a dust protection set and checked these for compatibility and completeness. Precisely. What can still happen in our training courses is that we are very often asked, what else can happen? How can I train my mechanics? What is available? We used to have quite a few shock absorbers to show this damage, now we have just this one. We took it out of a car years ago and there are just so many faults on it that we didn't need to specially prepare it for our training courses. It was taken out of the car exactly as you see it here. Here, for example, we have this elongated thread. This elongated thread, it typically results from the use of an impact wrench. Therefore, we have too much torque on the thread. It just stretches out. On the other hand, the following can happen. The piston rod starts to rotate, and in the shock absorber itself, the working piston is fixed on the piston rod with a nut. This can also become too loose or too tight. Neither are good and can lead to seal damage. Exactly. And to prevent this, it is necessary to install and remove the shock absorbers at a clean workplace with suitable tools. We have a plug insert for this purpose, to fix the piston rod and tighten the mounting nut accordingly. At the same time, it's never good practice to use this tool and to think to yourself, I'll just put a pair of gripping pliers or water pump pliers on here and hold the piston rod to tighten the whole thing. That is, you can really see here in the upper area of the piston rod that we have such damage here. At the same time, it is clear that this damage caused by the sealing system results in a loss of oil. That means the shock absorber is damaged. Let's go further down and look at the piston rod. We see damage here in the front. It's flaking. This is a typical indication that the car has been driven without a protective tube or that the buffer stop protective tube were too old and have come loose from the support bearing. They've fallen off and therefore damage can occur at the front. These are common issues that often arise and whenever this damage passes through the seating system, oil is then lost. If we now simply go further down here, then we see this very slight oil loss up here, for example. 
That means, whenever we replace shock absorbers, we need to pay attention to the protective tube and the pressure stop and order new parts. Let's go further down. At the front, for example, we have symmetrically arranged damage. This clearly indicates a clamping in a vice. That means that this pipe has been squeezed. The problem is that this squeezing damages the raceway of the working piston. In this case, it would have made sense to use such a prism, a shock absorber prism, to protect the shock absorber with a plastic button. Then if we just go down further on this shock absorber, we see the rubber to metal connection here. This rubber metal connection has migrated slightly. This migration can be an indication of damage. We're going to take a closer look at this shock absorber. Then we see up here how the chrome layer is worn on one side. That's an indication, for example, that we may have had accident damage to the vehicle. That means the piston rod gets too much lateral force and therefore the chrome layer of the piston rod is damaged. The same can also happen if attachments are mounted incorrectly. And yes, last but not least, what we unfortunately still see relatively often is, for example, exactly the same damage, but it can be caused, for example, by the shock absorber being installed under tension during final assembly. Exactly. And what is meant by tension-free is that the wheel and the boxes are basically fixed in position. When the vehicle is on the wheels, not on the two-post car hoist where the wheel is deflected, but as we have it here with the vehicle, is on the wheels. We have already installed the new shock absorber. The bolt is not yet fixed and I will now pre-tension it. I'll tighten it with the torque defined by the vehicle manufacturer. A subsequent measurement is necessary to ensure the safe functioning of the vehicle. Of course, the test drive afterwards is essential. As you see, sometimes a small mistake can have a big effect. At the Bierstein Academy, we provide appropriate information during training courses to ensure that mistakes like this don't happen. However, it is also important that everyone in the workshop has this knowledge. That makes sense. Let's say a car comes into the workshop that you as a mechanic rarely work on. What advice can you hand out in this situation? It's better to call us once too often than too little. In other words, we take a close look at what assistance we can provide and pass it on to the garage or the mechanic. The mechanic can then repair the car professionally. These online training courses at the Bierstein Academy are even free of charge. This means that as a mechanic or garage, you only need to invest a little time to really save money afterwards. And above all, you have satisfied customers.